Hey everybody, I'm Jen Canodal, and today is such a special treat because I have my pastor, John Burke, here, and um, he just wrote this book, Imagine Heaven, and this is your second or third book? Fourth. Wow! I know. Wow, that crazy. is really, yeah, that is really yeah. crazy, and um, um, what I told you about this book is that I, obviously, I just intended to like it because it was John's, and I just like <laughs> anything that he does, but um, it really, it really ended up rocking my world, and mm -hmm. um, so I know, but if you could just tell people why you wrote the book. Well, it's, uh, it's about near-death experiences and God's promises, and basically, it started for me um, when my dad was dying of cancer and uh, it was years ago and I read the first book on near-death experiences the one that really coined the term and um, and I really didn't have any faith so at that night I read it and I thought oh my gosh if this is true like this is the most important thing ever and that began me on a journey of faith and um, came to faith really the next year and so for the last about 30 years I've been not only studying um, the Bible and what right. it says, but also uh, read now about a thousand of these near-death experiences. And so what I'm doing in this is I'm putting together the, the, the commonalities of these near-death experiences and showing how really they're, they're showing us what the Bible has said all, all along. And it really gives you this look into this amazing future that awaits us. And, and that's what I really hope is that people will see, gosh, this is real and it's worth living for. Yeah, um, I found that for myself, uh, I was in a place, I'm finding in my Christian walk that I, I tend to swing from one way to another, and I was in a place of a lot of condemnation because yeah. I was feeling that I wasn't living up to who God wanted me to be, and it was really kind of consuming me, and like, you know, oh, I'm such a terrible person, and I don't, I, I, hopefully I'm not the only one that goes through that, but really, You're not. <laughs> I felt like I read this book, and I was like, I'm tripping, I'm going to heaven, like, this is awesome, this is so awesome. Well, and, that, and doesn't it give you a picture of just how God is so enamored with us? Yeah. Like that he he created us, so yeah. he looks at us like his children that he loves. Right. I know, but but it's yeah. true. That's yeah. that that's the hope you you realize is that, I mean, once you realize how God feels about you, and you realize that you're you're safe with him, you're right with him, it like it sets all that striving. It kind of like goes, wait, what 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 am I trying to prove and to who? Yeah, and it really frees you up then to be who you are and to use your gifts to make a difference. Right. And, and I think that's the hope. It's, it's what it gave me and what I was hoping to give to people reading it. Yeah, it was in, in, in the, at the series that we went through um, during service. That's online also, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the videos, it's like to watch these people, there's just so much authenticity and truth in their emotions and their face of what they saw and just the overwhelmness. Um, really, the atheist uh, guy, I was just like... <gasps> I mean, it was well, so awesome. Yeah, and, and that's what I was trying to do. I, I've included about 120 of the thousand stories that I looked at in the book. And um, the, the, the six that we interviewed are in there. And, you know, there are people like, um, you know, college professors who were atheists and now are pastors, right, yeah. after this experience. And uh, TWA airline captains and spine surgeons and, uh, you know, I mean, these credible people who have nothing to gain making up wild fanciful stories right and that's what i was trying to help people see as well is that you know my i wrote write a chapter skeptical doctors and the afterlife and what has convinced so many skeptical doctors there really is life after death mm -hmm. because of what their patients said they saw when they left their bodies and were observing what was going on in the room and it convinces people that th this is not the end. That's so awesome. I, I love that you're an engineer and you hit it from a logical perspective. That kind of stuff really resonates with me. Uh, you know, C.S. Lewis or The Case for Christ or all those, yeah. all those types of books. And um, so the, the ending question that I want to ask you is that um, just being completely transparent, it's like I'm super stoked about going to heaven that I'm finding that every day I'm all, you could, you could take me. I mean, <laughs> today be fine. You know, like, I, yeah. it, it, there's a little fine line of like, I don't want to be here. Like this, I know, and I that, just want to go be with you. I know, and there, and there, and there is a, um, there is a, there's a tension. And you know what's interesting? I mean, Paul said the same thing, right? 
you know, that he said he, he had he had this near-death experience. And then he writes in Philippians, Philippians and he says, you know, for me, uh, to live is, is Christ, but to die is gain. Yeah. And it's that tension. And he, and he, he goes, you know, to, to, to live, well, that's much better for you because I want to serve you and I want to make a difference. But for me, what I got coming is, is far better for me. Right. And I think, I think there is a healthy tension in that. But I, I, I think the hope that you start to see, you know, when you, st- I, I tried to put it in, in their words so that you really see what they're seeing that the scripture says. Mm-hmm. And, but the last chapters, you know, I write on um, not only the hope of heaven, but how it's going to be life, right? And how Jesus says what we do in this life really does matter. Mm -hmm. And that there are rewards to come. Like how we live this life really does affect how we will experience life eternal. And and that's what I try to keep in mind. Like, no, it's going to be worth it. And it's worth being faithful now. But at the same time, there is that tension like, Oh, but it's going to be so much better. Yeah, I'm just lazy. I'm like, oh, this is hard. I just <laughs> I want to cover. There's no problem. Well, sometimes I feel the same way. Yeah. You know, and I know I said that, but I, it was it was so profound to me how everyone was talking about the life review and just really so profound how um, a, a lot of people, when they die, they experienced a life review and the highlights were not their achievements and their job and everything that we strive for. And that, like, <sighs> Well, yeah, and, and I mean, they... They relive all the moments of their lives, but God shows them how their uh, their thoughts and actions affected the thoughts and actions of others, and they experience that. But the other thing, you know, that they commonly see and realize is that all those little things that we thought, you know, no one noticed and no one cares, but God does, and He wants to reward that. Yeah. And you do, you realize, I mean, I think that's the freedom of it too, is you realize, you know, not everyone's going to be rich or famous or successful in the world's eyes. And even when you are, it's like a treadmill, mm-hmm. right? Because as soon as it starts to slip in the rating, it's like, oh, run faster. Right. It's just, it, it doesn't get, it doesn't get it. Mm-hmm. But God sees and he cares about your heart and everyone can be faithful. And everyone can run their unique race right. and be the unique person God intended. And in the end, that's all we have to do. And so it really does free you up to go, okay, I can be me and I can be faithful to what God's put before me today, loving him and loving the people around me and using the gifts I've got to, to make a difference while I'm here. It's true. What do you want me to do today, God? I'm mm-hmm. all yours. Well, I thank you so much, Sean. You've just been such an amazing influence in my life. And know, knowing you for all these years and watching Gateway grow, it's just... Um, just your leadership and your heart for God, it's inspiring. And I, we really appreciate, I know we really appreciate you. Um, so it's called Imagine Heaven. You don't even need to take my word for it. It's like at the top of the Amazon chart. So I'm just, I'm so blessed to know you. And, oh, thanks, um, Jen. I'm just, blessed to know you. Thanks. So um, there you go. Have, have a blessed day, everyone.